There are dozens of credit card setups to choose from, each giving you opportunities to earn cash back in different ways. And depending on how many cards you're willing to carry and how much you're willing to spend in annual fees, these card setups can get pretty crazy. Today, we are gonna look at five of the main credit card setups out there that won't require you to have too many credit cards out there, and there's gonna be plenty of options for annual fees depending on what you're looking for. And our range in fees for these setups are gonna start at $0 for a no fee setup, all the way to north of $1,000 for the Amex trifecta. So I promise there is something here for everyone. But getting right into things, let's talk about our first setup on today's list, and it's gonna be the Chase trifecta. So for the Chase trifecta, you're gonna have two different options for how you would like to build it, both with different annual fees tied to it. The first option is you can go with the Chase Freedom Limited, Chase Freedom Flex, and then the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is a $95 annual fee. The other option is you can go with the Chase Freedom Unlimited, Chase Freedom Flex, and then the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which has a $550 annual fee. So really the only difference is which Chase Sapphire card would you like to go with? Both of our Chase Freedom cards have no fee attached to them, but the Sapphire cards will range from that $95 fee to that $550 fee, depending on what you're looking for. So how exactly will you use this setup if you were to go get it? Well, the Chase Freedom Unlimited is gonna be our catch-all credit card. This is gonna be able to earn you 1.5% cash back everywhere you go. You can earn 3% back on your dining, 3% back on your drugstore purchases, and 5% back on our Chase purchase travel. But the only thing you really will use it for is gonna be that 1.5% cash back everywhere you go. Our second segment of this trifecta is the Chase Freedom Flex. This card is gonna sound very similar to that Freedom Unlimited. You can earn 5% back on your Chase purchase travel, 3% on your dining and drugstore purchases, and 1% elsewhere. The difference is you can also earn 5% cash back on a rotating quarterly category throughout the year. And this is truly where you are gonna use this card a lot. For those rotating categories, some quarters it might be for places like Walmart, another quarter it could be on your gas and groceries. So depending on the time of the year, you're gonna be using this for your rotating categories and you can designate either the Chase Freedom Unlimited or the Chase Freedom Flex card as your drugstore purchase card. But now we need to look at both the Chase Sapphire Preferred and Chase Sapphire Reserve. Starting off with that Sapphire Reserve, we saw it had a $95 annual fee. Now this card is gonna be able to lock up five times points back on your Chase Purchase Travel, two times points back on all of your other travel that does not need to be inside of Chase, three times points back on your dining, which will include delivery services, 3x points on your online grocery orders, and 3x points on select streaming services. This card is also gonna feature a $50 annual credit, which will be used for a hotel stay, so all I have to do to take advantage of this is stay in a hotel. The Sapphire Preferred is a travel card, so the assumption is you'll probably be doing that anyway. You're gonna also receive a complimentary DoorDash Dash Pass subscription valued at $120 each year. You can earn five times points back on your Peloton purchases and five times points back on your Lyft rides as well. But the best part about this card is you can get an additional 25% value on all of your travel purchased through the Chase portal. So this really means if I've pulled all of my cash back across all my credit cards inside of Chase, I can then get more value with it if I use it inside their portal, which could take 100,000 points, add on that 25% boost to give me an extra $250 of cash back. As for how you'll use this card, designate it for travel and food. You can use it for those select streaming services just to not complicate things, travel, food, streaming services. But let's say that you decide to go with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which carries a $550 annual fee, which is significantly steeper. Well, for that card, you can earn five times points back on your flights purchased through Chase, 10 times points back on your rental cars and hotels purchased through Chase, three times points back on all of your other travel purchase that does not need to be through Chase, three times back on your dining, and also you can earn 10 times points back on dining purchased through the Chase portal. So with this card, there's gonna be a $300 annual travel credit that you can take advantage of. I like viewing this as a way to almost knock off the annual fee. There's also gonna be around $1,000 of partner benefits and value included with the Sapphire Reserve. To go over these things quickly, you're gonna have Lyft Pink All Access for two years, valued at $199 each year. You're gonna have that same DoorDash Dash Pass subscription at $120 each year, and also receive $5 monthly towards that. So that's around $60 each year. You're gonna have access to Chase lounges and also part of their lounge collection at over 1,300 airports worldwide. This is valued at around $500 each year. You're gonna have perks through the edit for $100 credit. And finally, you can earn 10 times points back on your Peloton purchases. 
There's some other things that I won't go over in detail, such as some complimentary upgrades and hotel statuses. Go check out my individual review on this trifecta or the card to learn more about everything you should know for that. And similar to our Sapphire Preferred, this card's also gonna give you a boost onto your chase points when you do use it for travel in their portal. This is gonna give you a 50% boost instead of 25%. So using the same example, if I had a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand chase points, that'll then be worth 150,000 points or an extra $500. So one final look at this setup, we're gonna use the Chase Freedom Unlimited for 1.5% cash back everywhere we go. Chase Freedom Flex for 3% back at our drugstores, as well as 5% on rotating quarterly categories. And then we're gonna use our respective Sapphire cards for our food, our travel, and whatever other things they could offer us, such as that streaming services with the preferred. And one last thing about this trifecta, Chase has one of the best systems out there for travel and transfer partners. Each Chase point that you earn is valued at around one cent per point for straight cash back. If you use it for travel though, it can reach upwards of two cents per point, and that two cents per point is honestly the top of the game compared to other credit card systems out there. With the transfer partners, Chase is gonna offer you a total of 14 partners, 11 airlines, three hotels. They're all gonna be at a one-to-one -one point ratio. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna run through the list. I will have it up here on the screen. I really do like that the Chase has a lot of great partners in terms of they have a lot of domestic companies for airlines. We're going to see later on some of the other setups we're talking about with their transfer partners have a larger quantity, but those partners might not be as useful if you are in the United States just trying to get around domestically. Now, I really do love the Chase Trifecta. It's the card setup that I personally carry. I use that Sapphire Preferred for my little boost on travel without totally breaking the bank there. If you're interested in any Chase card, be sure to go sign up for it down below in the description with my link. It really helps out. But now let's move on to our second setup on today's list, and this is going to be the City Trifecta. So the City Trifecta is composed of three credit cards. They're going to be the City Double Cash, City Custom Cash, and then the City Strata Premier. The grand total for that is going to be $95. Looking at each card, starting with that City Double Cash, this card has no annual fee and the use cases for it are quite simple. You can lock up 2% cash back everywhere you go. This is our designated catch-all credit card for this trifecta. Our second card in the setup is gonna be the City Custom Cash. The way that this card works, you can earn 5% cash back on your highest eligible spend category every single billing cycle up to the first $500 you spend. You can also earn 1% everywhere else, but that won't be used with this setup. For that 5% back though, I really love this as it's a great flexing utility. You can plan around big purchases or use it for things that your other cards don't cover. For example, maybe I spend a lot on groceries and I wanna get 5% back there. Use the custom cash to lock up 5% there. Maybe you have a big purchase coming up for a new TV. Designate this card for that month to purchase that TV and lock up 5% there. And then our final segment for the Trifecta is the City Strata Premier, which has that $95 annual fee. So for this credit card, our spend categories are gonna give us three times points back on all of our air travels and hotel purchases. Does not need to be through City. You can get three times points back on dining and at supermarkets. And finally, you can get three times points back on your EV charging stations and at gas stations. Another point about this card, there's gonna be a $100 annual hotel credit the way that you can get this is if you spend $500 in one single stay for a hotel, then you will be awarded that $100 statement credit, which if you are planning on taking a big trip anyways, would essentially wipe away the fee to hold this credit card. But just to see how we can actually use this setup, the City Strata Premier is gonna give three times points back on those select travel, three times on dining, groceries, gas, and at EV charging stations. We're gonna use the city custom cash at a category of choice and whatever else we spend on, we're gonna to go to that city double cash to lock up 2% cash back there. Now, if you are interested in travel, which I assume a lot of people are, city does have a lot of partners to offer you. They have 19 total transfer partners. You're gonna have access to 14 airlines, four hotels, and one retail partner. I mentioned earlier, I really like Chase's partners domestically. I think that city has a lot of partners, but as you guys can see, a lot of them are unique and probably are more international based. And this is my own personal opinion based off what I like to fly and companies that I am familiar with for my air travel and hotels. Could totally be wrong here for what works for you. Just definitely check out what partners are available in each system and pick based off of that. And as for the actual point value, if we want cash back, it's one cent per point. And if we do go to use to transfer partners, it can reach upwards around 1.6 to 1.7 cents per point. 
very respectable, just not as high up as some of our other transfer partners we'll see with our other ecosystems. But let's now jump over to our third setup on today's list, and this is going to be the Capital One Duo, being our only two card setup on the list today. As for how you can actually build the setup, the first card you need is the Capital One Saver 1, which has no annual fee. Now for the second card, you do have some options between the Capital One Venture cards. For the sake of the video today, I'm going to be talking about the Capital One Venture X, as that's the one that a lot of people do like pairing with it. It does have a higher annual fee at $395. If you go with just the Venture, you can build it for $95. So there are some options for you to choose from. I just know that with the Venture X, that's how you can get the most value for both travel and for the actual spend categories with it. But first, looking at how we'll use the setup, the Capital One Saver One is gonna be used for a lot of different categories to lock up 3% or more cash back. The Saver One can earn you 5% cash back on our hotels and rental cars purchased through Capital One. You can also earn 3% cash back on our dining, entertainment, popular streaming services, services, groceries, and then 1% cash back everywhere else. And I really love these spending categories on a no fee card. Being part of a duo, yeah, you'll get more out there later, but as a standalone card, I think that the Capital One Saver One is one of the best out there. It covers you with your food. It covers you with some streaming services. Those are some of the most common places people spend. So if you are interested in just one card and don't want a full setup, definitely check this one out. I should also mention currently on the Saver one, you can get 10% back on your Uber purchases up through, I believe, November, 2024. This is pretty nice. You're also gonna get a Uber One membership covered up through that same time. On top of that, this card can give you 8% cash back on your Capital One purchased entertainment. But let's now look at the Capital One Venture X, which will have a high annual fee of $395 attached to it. So the spending categories on this card are quite simple. You can earn 10 times miles on your rental cars and hotels purchased through Capital One, five times miles on your flights through Capital One, and two times miles everywhere else. This is gonna act as your travel card, but also your catch-all card. And with this card, with that annual fee, you're gonna have a bunch of value that we do see with those high annual fee cards, such as a $300 annual travel credit. You're gonna get $100 as an anniversary gift each year as in the form of 10,000 miles. There's a $100 credit for global entry or TSA pre-check every four years. You're gonna have access to over 1,300 airport lounges worldwide valued at around $500. There's a $100 experience credit for travel for two for your daily breakfast. There's gonna be a $50 experience credit for hotel stay then there's going to be a lot of other complimentary upgrades and VIP services included with this credit card. But to sum up how we'd actually use this duo, we're going to use the Capital One Venture X to lock up 10 times miles on our hotels and rental cars, five times miles on our flights, and two times miles everywhere else we don't spend with the Saver One. Then with that Saver One, we can lock up 3% cash back on our dining, entertainment, select streaming services, and grocery purchases. And to share a little bit more about how you can use this for travel, Capital One is gonna offer you 18 total transfer partners, 15 airlines, three hotels. With that, the value of our actual miles and points we're gonna be earning for transferring out is gonna be around 1.8 to 1.9 cents per point. Very respectful, still just a little bit below Chase and American Express. When it is for just cash back though, it's one cent per point. And similar to City, in my own personal opinion, Capital One has a ton to offer in terms of the quantity of partners. I do think that they're a little more unique and better for international travel maybe, but lack for domestic travel. And if you're interested in a video ranking all the transfer partners between the big companies out there, be sure to check that out. I'll have that linked up above and down below, but let me know your thoughts on these partners. Moving on to our fourth setup today, and it's gonna be the Wells Fargo Trifecta. So the Wells Fargo Trifecta is fairly new and you have two options to build it. You can build it with no fee or a $95 annual fee. It's gonna consist of the Wells Fargo Active Cash, the Wells Fargo Attune, and either the Wells Fargo Autograph card or the Wells Fargo Autograph Journey card. Walking through each card, our Wells Fargo Active Cash is gonna have no annual fee and it's gonna act as our catch-all credit card. It's gonna give you 2% cash back everywhere you spend. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Very, very simple to use. Our second card in the trifecta is gonna be the Wells Fargo Attune credit card, which is actually the newest card in this entire video. This is also gonna have no annual fee. And with it, you're gonna be able to earn 4% cash back at some of the most unique spending categories. These categories are gonna include self-care purchases, sports, recreation, and entertainment purchases, as well as impactful purchases. So our Wells Fargo Autograph card is gonna be that no annual fee credit card that will also grant you access to transfer partners, so don't write it off just because it has no fee for travel. And this card is gonna earn you three times points back on your dining, 
travel, gas, transit, popular streaming services, and on your cell phone plans. But maybe you elect to go with the Wells Fargo Autograph Journey card. That has slightly different spending categories. With this card, you can earn five times points back on your hotel purchases, four times points back on your airline purchases, three times points back on all of your other travel, three times points back on your dining, and one times points everywhere else. This card is also gonna give us a $50 annual travel credit when we do purchase an airline fare over $50. And Wells Fargo is newer to the whole transfer partner game, but I still want to talk about them. They're going to be able to offer you access to six partners if you do carry one of the autograph cards. Of those six partners, five are going to be airlines, one is going to be a hotel partner. The actual value of the points you are earning with Wells Fargo is one cent per point when redeemed for straight cash back. But if you do elect to try and transfer them out, it can get up to around 1.5 cents per point. And that is going to be the lowest of all the trifectas and duos we see today. But I still think that there's a lot of value here with Wells Fargo, especially given you can build this setup for no dollars if you want. The way you're going to use this setup on both of your autograph cards, you're going to use it for every single category there. The Attune card, you can use it for every single category there. And then for your active cash, if something isn't covered in those categories, fall back on there. There's very little overlap, if any, with these credit cards, which is a huge reason I like the Wells Fargo setup. But now moving on to our final setup in today's list, and it's gonna be the American Express trifecta. So the Amex trifecta is very, very well known. It consists of the Amex Gold, Amex Platinum, and American Express Blue Business Plus. Of those cards, the total fee is gonna be over $1,000 at 1,020. Looking at each of these cards, our Blue Business Plus is going to be our no annual fee catch-all credit card. With this card, you can earn two times points back everywhere you go at a flat rate. To get this card, you will need to have a business. This doesn't mean a traditional business. You can be a sole proprietor in this business. It could be freelance work, a side hustle, something like that that will allow you to get this credit card so you don't need to have a ton of employees or anything like that. The second segment of the trifecta is going to be the American Express Gold Card, which has recently been revamped and now carries a higher annual fee at $325. As for the spending categories on that credit card, you can earn four times points back on your dining and grocery purchases, three times points back on your flights purchased through Amex, two times points back on your hotels through Amex, one times points back everywhere else. Looking at some statement credits with this card, each year you're gonna get $120 for Uber Cash. There's an $84 Dunkin' Donuts credit. There's gonna be a $100 Resi credit, a $120 dining credit, a $100 experience credit for a hotel stay, and also some access to American Express exclusive offers. And then that brings us to our Amex Platinum card, which is gonna be designated for travel and has so much value inside of it. The spending categories will give you five times points back on your flights and hotels through American Express, and one times points everywhere else. But now let's take a look at all these statement credits and value involved with this card. There's over $1,500 here, so there's a lot to know. With this card, you're gonna get a $200 hotel credit each year, $240 digital entertainment credit, a $200 airline credit, and $155 Walmart Plus credit. You're gonna have access to airport lounges worldwide valued at around $500. There's gonna be $200 for Uber Cash, a $100 Saks Fifth Avenue credit, as well as $189 for Clear Plus. There are a lot of things I did not go over with the card just for the sake of time. If you are really interested in this card, be sure to check out my in-depth review on the Platinum to go over every credit and value you can get out of it. But just to sum up how we will actually use the trifecta, it's pretty simple. Platinum card is gonna give us points back on all of our travel. Our gold card is gonna be our designated food card. And if it's not travel or food, Blue Business Plus. In taking a look at our transfer partners with this trifecta, Amex offers you 21 total partners, 18 airlines, three hotels. The actual value of your points is pretty high. For cash back, it's just one cent per point, which is typical everywhere you go. But when you do use it for travel, it can be upwards around two cents per point, which ranks right up there with Chase. And I will say, I do like the Amex transfer partners. I think they're some of the best out there. They're very, very similar to Chase, as you can see. Some of them do have a little bit of a different ratio for how many points you get when you do transfer out. I know that Hilton gives you a one to two point ratio, meaning that if I take a thousand Amex points, I get 2000 there, which is pretty significant for your hotel stays. But that is gonna wrap up a list of these setups for today. Like I said earlier, there are so many options for you to choose from, and it doesn't mean that you have to build up in one specific system. I like doing that because it kind of pools your points together, but maybe you like to couple the cards that I talked about and you'd rather take and mix and match there. 
By all means, do that. Your credit card journey is what you make it. Enjoy playing around and figuring out what works best for you. Be sure to let me know which setup was your favorite down below in the comments. My personal one is Chase, just because I do carry it. But another one I would like to carry is the Amex one. It's just it has a high annual fee. If you guys could also go hit like, and if you got something out of the video today, consider subscribing. It really goes a long way in helping me grow the channel. But I greatly appreciate y'all watching, and I'll see you in the next video.